What is up, football fans? I am Danny Austin. This is the Live from the 55 podcast. We are filming live here at our Martyrloop Calgary, Alberta studios. It is Wednesday afternoon. This is going to be coming out Thursday morning. We got a fun show. We had to skip this weekend's episode just because it was Thanksgiving long weekend and, you know, everyone deserves a break. Had lots going on. My producers had lots going on. They absolutely deserve a break. So happy to be back. A ton to talk about. I'm excited about this episode. We got Britton Gray from CJME in Regina. He is one of the best, if not the best, huh? riders, reporters, guys to have around. He's been on the show a couple of times, and we're always happy to have him back. Uh, obviously, there's sort of this Stampeders riders game where if the Stampeders lose, they're out of playoff contention. If they win, they have their lives back they have a chance to make the playoffs because they'll have the season series with the riders and could catch them it's one of the weirder games i i feel like i've ever sort of had to like preview cover whatever you want to call it like, is it a huge game is it even a big game what is this game both of these teams the fan bases are pretty down right now these teams are not winning football games someone presumably has to win i, I think i mean maybe it's a tie that would wouldn't that be terrible but yeah we're going to break that game down. Different conversation than I thought we were going to have. All season, I sort of had this one circled. And then just, these teams are just not playing good football right now. So it's it's still a big game in the standings, but just doesn't have that big game feel that, you know, the Bombers and Lions certainly had last weekend. And boy, did that game ever live up to the hype. I mean, I feel like we've been talking about that one since June. Um, you know, battle for the top of the West. There, Bombers come storming back. Lions have the chance to win it in the final seconds. Dominic Grimes, if he'd gone down, I can't blame him for not going down. But had he gone down, Lions might have won that one. Anyways, Bomb Bombers win in overtime. In my opinion, this pretty much like that. That was a huge win because it means that the West Final is in Winnipeg. It's going to be cold weather. I imagine it's going to be against the Lions, who you know are a Vancouver team. The Lions certainly would have loved to play that at home, indoors, in BC Place. This very much for me just sets up the Bombers going back to fourth Grey Cup in a row. Um, huge, huge win. That one lived up to the hype. That was an awesome game. Not sure Stamps Riders are quite gonna gonna live up to that one, but um, yeah, I just feel in general that was we called it the game of the season. Not sure any game was better than it this year. Uh, was very happy to see that real primetime spotlight. Two good teams battling it out. You love to see it. We will see them again in November. I can pretty much guarantee that. Um, yeah, yeah, that. I don't know. The Argos did what the Argos always do. They stomp the Elks. I guess we should. No, I do have something to say about the Red Blacks and Alouettes. Despite the Red Blacks, that was an embarrassing performance. Twenty-nine three loss. Who cares about all that? We all around here are pretty pretty high on the Alouettes right now. I think that's a good football team. But Sean Lemon, a hundred career sacks. You guys know, I don't think <clears throat> anyone talked more about Sean Lemon getting to that than me. I think it's a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. So few players have done it in CFL history. Just happy for the guy. I'm not going to belabor the point, but, um, you know, Lemon's been a guest on here a couple of times. You know, I love him. He's he's the best guy around. So uh, just it's been an honor covering that guy. And it's great to see him get it. Great to see him get his flowers. Um, Sean Lemon, you know, he's one of my favorites. Hall of Famer, that's for sure. What a career. And still going. Eight sacks. Hasn't played that many games. Didn't, wasn't employed first couple months of the season. Insane. Yeah. I don't know. It's not really much more to say. We had a long show here. I'll be honest. I've already talked to Ian and Brennan. They were awesome. Uh, fun week ahead. You got, you got BC Hamilton on Friday night. Then you got the Riders and Stamps, that one on Friday night. And then, you know, Montreal Edmonton. It's not much of a game, but whatever. On Saturday, and Red Blocks, Argos. Also, Argos presumably should stomp them, so not much of a game. But anyways, guys, we got a really fun episode. Can't wait. Let's get to Britain. We're going to get to Ian later. Um, shout out to Mugs Pub. Thank you uh, to them for being our sponsor. I, I really do recommend going and checking out Mugs, and, and also thank you to Fraser and Fake. So, guys, thank you so much. Um, let's get to it. Let's get to Britain. First, though, a word from our sponsor, Mugs Pub. Guys, what are you doing tonight? I don't know what you're doing tonight. You're probably looking for something. Guys, you got to go check out Mugs Pub. This is probably my favorite pub in the city, 1330 15th Avenue Southwest, right in the Beltline. Honestly, they do it all. I, for years, played trivia on Wednesday nights at Mugs. It's the best trivia night in the city. Other nights, they got music. They got specials every single night. Some of the best food and drink specials in the entire city are at Mugs Pub. 
you want wine, you want beer, you want cocktails. They got it all. Big fan of their fish and chips. They got some amazing pizza. You want to watch the game? They got TV screens. You want to just have a drink with friends? Perfect spot to do it. You want to have some food? As I said, it's delicious. Mugs Pub. We love having them as a sponsor. We love having them just down the road from us here at our studios. Check out Mugs Pub. They're the best. All right. A shout out about in the intro. One of my favorites, a returning guest here, Britton Gray. You've been on a couple of times uh, from CJME in Regina. You do such an incredible job covering the riders. We got we to gotta talk about this uh, potentially huge game. One, just, just such a weird game between the riders and Sam's. But before we do that, how are you doing? How is life in Regina? I'm good. I'm good. It's Regina. It's getting a little bit colder here. So I'm waiting for that kind of first. We've had snow already. I don't know if you had snow in Calgary, but we did Not have yet. Okay. some snow falling. It hasn't stayed. And it got up to plus 20 like two days later because that's kind of how the weather works in Saskatchewan. But I mean, otherwise, it's good. You know, the, the riders always keeping things interesting. The Pats are back. And we got to watch Connor Bedard the other night make his NHL debut, which was fun to see a guy who you, yeah. you cover through the junior ranks kind of make that leap to the pros. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I think all of us are watching him, whether we we covered him in, in, in junior or not. So for you guys, there's just got to be that added, like sort of emotional attachment that you develop, especially when you cover like guys as young as he was when he was in Regina. Yeah, exactly. It's well to think of you, you're interviewing him as a 15 year old, and now he's taking the face off across from Sidney Crosby. And the, the story I always share about Connor Bedard and the kind of kid he was here was it was the day at, like the day after his uh, grandfather had died, or, or two days after he goes out, he plays the game, scores two goals, and then is even willing to talk to media about it. He absolutely could have said no, and we would have 100 yeah. percent understood that decision. But he won't talk to us shared his story about how important it was for him to play and how important it was to his grandpa that he would be out there playing. So great kid. And I'm excited to see what he can do in the NHL now. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Um, so, I mean, what's going on with the riders right now? I'm just going to ask I mean, the, the most, just the wide, you can go whatever direction you want. With your answer here. <laughs> what's going on with the riders right now? If I knew the 100% guaranteed answer, I think you could be a very rich man because I think it would help a lot of teams out if we could figure it out. But it's just recently this team just hasn't been in games. They they, they have been kind of pushed around even with uh, – it goes back to the Banjo Bowl where they lost big and the Bombers put up over 50 on them. And it feels like they just have lost their confidence since then. It feels like they just haven't been able to refine it. When they get down in games, there's really no, doesn't feel like there's a sense that this team can come back right now. Luckily for the Riders, I mean, they're still in control of their own destiny. Like Despite the five-game losing streak, they're still in third place. But it, it just feels like they're they, – they talk about execution being the main reason why it's not happening. It's just execution, execution isn't working. And I'm like, well – does that mean you're unprepared? Like, does that mean that whatever's mm -hmm. going on in practice isn't translating to the game? And I, it's just based on what I've been able to see so far in these games. And then obviously the loss to the Tiger Cats on a Legends night where George Reed was being honored, the 2013 Grey Cup team being honored, and it felt like they came out flat. And so I don't know what more needs to happen to motivate this group. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what, what needs to happen. It's just what's really weird to me about it is if you took me back to, I mean, you mentioned the Banjo Bowl, but like August 20th, they beat the BC Lions 34-29. September 3rd, at home, they beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 32-30. At that point, I mean, to be perfectly honest, you covering the Stamps, that was the point where I was like, oh, I don't think the Stamps are going to catch the Riders. But I partially was doing that because I thought the Riders, all right, well, they look like a pretty darn good team. And, you know, I, I, that should have, to me, that was like where you gain confidence. And yes, you go and get crushed a little bit, you know, six days later by the Bombers, but like they've beaten good teams this year. And it's not like, it's not like they were beating those teams when Trevor Harris was in at quarterback and then they're mm -hmm. losing because they lost them. Like it, I, I don't really understand it. Yeah, it, it, it has been weird because I've always said when I look at this team's talent, it, they can compete. They've proven they can compete with the CFL best, but it's just the last few games. Like I said, it, I have no idea what's gone on the last few games. It, it just doesn't feel like this team has that extra physicality, that extra firepower that you just need to win in pro football. They, they're just lacking something. And so 
yeah, I, I, I'm ex- I'm interested to see what happens this week if they can finally find it because I mean, if the Riders win, they're in. It, it's a simple math equation for them. But if they lose, it gets real muddy down the line here. Yeah, I mean, because they then then they have Toronto, right? Like that's mm-hmm. they're like they're probably not going to beat the Argos. Um, so all of a sudden, Calgary then like let's say Calgary wins. You're basically just hoping that the Bombers rest everyone in the final game of your season, and 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 you might somehow get into the playoffs despite everything. And like, like what I said about like, well, you guys beat the Bombers. Like the Stamps haven't done that. Like the Stamps don't have that like that mm-hmm. win against a good team that makes you think, okay, well, there's actually you know something there. So, um, is there like among the fan base? I guess this is more about the fan base than anyone else. Is is there panic in, in Saskatchewan about it? absolutely there's panic especially because with how last year went we're, it's it's an identical kind of feeling here they got to six wins and then just lost the last half of their season they couldn't find a way to win any games in the back half so i i think there's panic and there there is a lot of call for changes on on the green zone post game show there was people considering uh daryl davis being one of them about do you just make a coaching change now and hope that it kind of elevates the guys like to do it this late in the season would almost be unprecedented in football, but you, you might have to do something like that. Right. And so wow. th- th- they obviously have, and it's going to be Craig Dickinson to the end of the season, but there's a lot of panic, a lot of frustration. Mostly. I think it's a lot of frustration with the fans because of like, like you mentioned, they have beaten the bombers. They have beaten the lions. How has it just gone off the rails so quickly for this team. I, I don't know if there's an answer. Maybe maybe it has something to do with uh, offensively. When I watched their games recently, I don't see as many deep shots being taken as they were in those games against BC and Winnipeg where Jake Dolagala, his biggest strength is his arm. He has a big arm. He can make those throws downfield, but they haven't been able to do that, whether that's by design or just defenses have kind of figured it out how to stop them and keep them in front. But right now it's just, it's, it's just a lot of frustration from the fan base here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, that that's an interesting point because what's weird to me is I think Sean Bain has been as effective a deep ball receiver as anyone in the league this this year in a lot of ways. So they do have the weapons there to do that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I when I look and I see that right now, I mean, they've allowed the third most sacks in 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 the league. I mean, is 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 it just that the Doliello doesn't have time to sort of get set and and let his receivers get there? I mean, is the O line doing what it needs to do? That's that's been part of it, I think. When you look at the riders recently, the 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 uh, especially the the Brandon Council along the offensive line has gotten a lot of criticism over the last few weeks, uh, especially from Belton Johnson, another one of our Green Zone uh, game day analysts here, former Grey Cup champion with the Riders. But he he's just getting beat, and that's forcing Dola Gala to. to uh, not be able to wait as long there's also been some fumble issues that have gone the other way and part of that has been the pressure they're getting on jake doligala i mean it's football right there's a whole bunch of different little things that kind of go into why this team just hasn't been going at the way that you maybe should but yeah i want to see them get back to the deep ball throw up some of those 50 50s to sam emelis is another kind of guy who's emerged this year as a deep threat for the riders they have the weapons and the defense, the defense, I don't know what's been going on with the Riders defense. When you're giving up nearly 40 points a game, even with a veteran quarterback leading a veteran offense, it's tough to win when they have to score 40 every night. Never mind Jake Dolagala, who only has a handful of starts. A lot of young receivers in this room. The offensive line's been dealing with some juggling. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of things that are kind of led into it. And it's just, it's just like... Who is going to figure it out? Is it the riders or the stamps? Because the stamps are kind of in the same boat from how I'm looking. It's just something's just not clicking there this year. I, I mean, it's true. I will still say, like, this isn't just record. This is just like, I think the riders have had a better season than the Stampeders, like, just based on they lost their sort of starting quarterback and still found ways to win what they did, mm-hmm. the, the games that they did. Like, it's so it's been funny to me watching, like, I sort of try, especially because I'm doing so much hockey right now, not really to troll Riders or Bombers fans anymore because it's just <laughs> like it's literally not worth it to me. But like I do see the that that disappointment and anger in 
Saskatchewan. And there's a part of me that I just look around Calgary and I'm like, guys, you guys are in the playoffs. Like, like you guys, you guys aren't the stamps. Like you guys are in the playoffs. <laughs> Calm down. But I also get it because the performances have been there. Now, I mean, I don't, that 38, 13 loss to the Ticats, like I'll be perfectly honest with you. I actually just think the Ticats are good. Obviously there are things that you don't like if you're a Riders fan or if you're mm -hmm. focused on the Riders, but like the Ticats are now at the point. I mean, they've been beating everybody for the last month and a bit. So I think that that loss, if you haven't been paying attention, you to the way the CFL has gone this year, you're looking and saying, ah, it's the third place team in the East just beat us. That's, that's not a good loss. But I, I also like, I just think the Ticats are, are probably the fourth or fifth best team in the league right now. Mm -hmm. um, agree, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And unfortunately the Riders and Stamps are not, um, but it's just like going into this game. I mean, the thing with the Stamps is the Stamps have had so many games that they like on paper should have won and haven't. So it's very hard. I mean, I just don't think there's any confidence here in Calgary among the fan base. Is the Would you say that the expectation is a Riders win among Riders fans right now? Oh, that, that's a great question because I, I don't think so. I don't think a lot of people view this team as being better than Calgary. Now, obviously, the different markets, they're more critical of the team that, that they watch every, every week, and, and I get that. But they're, like the, the loss to Hamilton, like you mentioned, it's not the fact that they lost to Hamilton. It's that they lost big to Hamilton. Those games against Ottawa and Edmonton, you look at the score, it's like, oh, it was kind of close. It wasn't close in those no. games. Those games were out of hand early, and it, the Riders both times scored late touchdowns to kind of make it look more presentable, but they've they've rarely been in games recently. And I think that's where a lot of the kind of uh, disappointment is recently and why there's not a lot of faith that this team can go on the road. I mean, the last time the Riders won a road game was way back when they went to Calgary. <laughs> they haven't won a road that's, game since wow. Calgary. So wow. I, I, mean, I don't think there's a lot of fans and what I'm hearing from people that believe this team is going to find a way to win this game. And I mean, I feel, I will say that there's a little bit more, I'd say it's about 50, 50 here. Like I, I, but again, the stamps have just disappointed so many times. Like it's so of the it, riders. That's why, I that's why I'm really excited to see what happens in this game. Just well, the chaos I mean, I that, that might ensue. Um, Reggie Bagleton looks like he's out for the stamps. And I do think that that's a big factor. It's funny. Both of us are kind of just being like, yeah, I think the other team is going to win without <laughs> like, um, that's just how it feels with both these teams though. Right? Like exactly. You, you both have covered them. <laughs> exactly. Like we, 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 yeah, this has been drilled into us. Um, there was that weird press conference with Trevor Harris, like what a month ago where he basically provided no updates, but on some level, but said it was going well. Is there any sense? Cause like, that's the wild card here is that mm -hmm. the, the riders win in three weeks, you got Trevor Harris back and, and you stroll into BC, you know, weather controlled stadium, everything. And you have a quarterback who's shown that he can win in the playoffs. Who's taken teams to great cups, you know, like I, I don't, that would be my sort of glimmer of hope, but do, is there any, is, do you think there's any chance? I mean, I personally don't believe there's any chance of that happening, but I'm also not the doctors. I don't know exactly yeah. how far along he is. He has been at least coming outside, for, like not participating during practice, but you do see him on the sidelines. He's out there talking to the quarterbacks now, and it, it, there's no limp. It doesn't look like there's much of a limp, but mm -hmm. it's about getting into game shape, right? And it's about kind of getting those reps and stuff and it's it's one thing to be healthy enough to walk around and be fine in your normal everyday life completely different to be ready to play a football game never mind a playoff football game on the road against the bc lions defense and matthew Betts. right so i don't see it but i mean if this let, let's say if the riders lose but then the stamps lose out the riders don't lose to toronto and they kind of fall into a playoff spot if you're desperate enough, if you really think that that might help you, I mean, I maybe this team will do it. Maybe they will put Trevor Harris out there, but that, that is the down how he's feeling. That would be the funniest of all outcomes. Is, <laughs> is the Stamps win, and all they have to do is win one of their last two when they're in, and then they they lose both, yep. and, that, and both these teams just limp into the end of their seasons. Um, I just wouldn't. I, I unfortunately there is. I'm not a betting man, but I would not put any money on either of these teams having a shot against bc in the west semifinal i just it 
it's it's more money for the players so i think that you'd be happy to see them get in there but um i just i think that that i mean other than montreal hamilton in the east semi-final yeah. it feels like we have a very sort of predictable playoffs coming up um if maybe that's just me what what's your sense there i i mean yes and no i i've always this whole season i've kind of been I don't think Winnipeg is as great as we've seen them in previous years. They look beatable, which they hadn't yep. looked beatable in previous years. And so I still think BC can go into Winnipeg if they make the West final and win. I just think Toronto right now, they're head and shoulders, I think above even, even the bombers and lines right now, especially when Chad Kelly's playing, yep. even when, even against Winnipeg, when they didn't play most, some of their starters, some of those key guys, they were right in it to, until the <laughs> end of that game with a lot of backups. It feels like we're on path. Like you said, it feels predictable Toronto, Winnipeg again. I will throw the BC kind of wild card in there, but Toronto I think is, will be representing the East yes. in the great cup this season. So do I, Hamilton has gotten hot and they just like, they do have that playoff experience that a little bit I'm curious about, but Toronto's too good. Like, I'm not going to disrespect Toronto by saying yeah. anything other than than that. Um, people got really mad at me when I said Chad Kelly was obviously the MOP um, on Twitter. I like, saw I, that. I, don't, I didn't get that. I, <laughs> why I, was so mad at why, me? <laughs> why is this surprising? It's Ch Chad Kelly is the MOP right now. I, 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 Zach's been good, but Chad Kelly has been like better and his team's winning more that's the thing and like the fact that they're not requiring him to have heroic fourth quarter comebacks is a credit to his first and second and third quarters like it's the fact that they don't <laughs> i i he just is to me it's no matter what if, if i had to pick one quarterback and i'm i'm generally going to like I, I look at quarterbacks first when it comes to mop voting i'm not saying that they're the bl and the end all and i certainly think brady Oliveira has had a great year he's a guy yeah. I would consider voting for like there's there's lots of guys around the league but like I, I was really like like people were just like you idiot you're only like of course <laughs> one guy was like of course the guy in Calgary is picking the the quarterback for the team that never loses and I was like like I don't know what What's me it? having to living in Calgary has to do with this <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's usually who wins these MOPs MVPs you're the yeah. quarterback of the team that wins you're you're more than likely going to be the MOP yeah, I think. Who do you have out of the West, right? If you're doing it right now, like I had it Vernon until last weekend, and then it's hard for me yeah. not to go with Zach. Or I mean, I, I think we. I always, as much as I, I hate that it's always a quarterback. And so when if another player has a great enough year, I usually try to lean them. And Brady but, Oliver has been dynamic. Let, let's be honest, he's been by far the best running back in the league, and it feels like. In re when I watch Winnipeg games, Zach's been great, but it feels like that team goes as Brady Oliveira goes this season. So that's where I would go out with the West. I like that. That's awesome. Um, well, buddy, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate having you on. You are the best. And uh, anything you want to anything you want to plug at all before I let you go? No, just uh, find me on Twitter at Britain Gray. We do the the Blitz, the podcast. Jamie and I kind of breaking down mostly Rider games. So we take a look around the CFL. We'll take a look at this game. And yeah, outside of that, always great talking to you, Danny. Oh, man. Always Thank great. You. Always enjoy coming on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Not a problem. Guys, let's say you're having a party. Let's say you're having a picnic. Let's say you're having any occasion. I gotta talk to you about Fraser and Fig. I love these guys. Here in Martin Loop, a couple storefronts down from our studio here. Fraser and Fig, man, these guys do these delicious elevated cheese and charcuterie boxes. You know, they're made with all these fresh artisanal ingredients, on-demand grazing, pickup, delivery you got it just let them know what you want they will get it to you honestly i'm such a big fan i had a picnic a little while ago i brought one of their curated boxes and it was a huge hit i looked great people loved it we're hungry they weren't hungry anymore these ready to go boxes they got them in four sizes all their boxes come with meat cheese dried fruit fresh fruit nuts olives pickles and carrots their selections vary from month to month choices are always new you know just because they've had one doesn't mean you've had them all i love fraser and fig i love having them as a sponsor they're the best make sure you check them out tell them by from the 55 sent you all right Ian Busby, you need no introduction. Um, uh, I appreciate that. Yes. Although I would appreciate an introduction. Yeah, from City <laughs> TV, longtime Stampeders reporter for The Sun. You did it for The Herald. You've done it for just about, I think you did it for Three Down for the a three while. Three Down Nation, yeah. yeah I been... was founding member there, and then I was too busy with my other parts of my life that I couldn't continue on, but they did a great job, and I was 
proud to be a part of that. I'm proud to be part of this too, by the way. So thank you again for all the invites to uh, come and join the podcast. And I'm I'm laughing a little bit inside about you and Britain talking about the riders versus stamps game. I'm like, somebody's got to win this game. <laughs> so you guys both don't believe that the teams that you cover are going to win this game. I have just Maybe been- it'll be a tie and that'll th- throw everything off. That would be hilarious. This team did. Um, <clears throat> these two teams did go to overtime earlier this year, so overtime is not out of the That's question. Right. The two games between these two teams earlier in the year were great. And it's going to be like, what a three-three overtime tie or something. God, <laughs> no, I just, I just. There have been so many games where I've been like, okay, this is must win based on everything. I think the stamps. This is, feels like it's the one where they're just going to get it together and they're just going to get over the line. Well, and then they don't. Yeah, and so it's just hard, like. It's not like disappointment because I'm a reporter. I'm not a fan, right. but like, it's I've just gone through this ten times. And this I've, I've been there with you the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Where and it's not they haven't been must win because if either must win or you're out of the playoffs, this one is must win because if they lose this game, they are officially eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. So it's it's over if you if this, like if they lose this game. They've played a lot. It felt of, like it's been over for a while, right? So, yes. yeah. Well, but the fact that they still have a chance is like, is it, I think, but that's why, why do they still have a chance? Because of what Britain's saying. So the Riders, like, it's the exact same situation. Yes. Both of these teams, had they just won one more game, like if the Riders had won one more game, yeah. the Stamps are out. If the Stamps had won one more game, we're going into this game being like, you're fighting for your playoff lives. The fact that they're not even, they're, they're fighting to stay alive, but they're not fighting to book a spot no it's a completely like. different like <laughs> they're fighting to have the chance if they beat bc or winnipeg and i just have like i was listening to the bill simmons podcast today like just on my way up here just him talking nfl stuff and like you know next year when i'm back in the summer doing stamps every day i just like it's just amazing how whenever the people talk about the nfl they talk about the left tackle like left tackle is just like one of the established five most important positions uh-huh. on the field. Yeah. And it just hasn't been like the stamps this entire season. I don't really think that they've, they've really solidified that left tackle position. They've gone through so many guys and, and here we are still. And like, that's where I've tried to defend Jake Mayer. Cause I don't think that, you know, the tackle position has been very good. I don't ultimately, I don't think most of the Stampeders position groups have been very good other than arguably the middle of the defensive line and Reggie Bagleton, and then they've gotten pretty good running back play. But, like, there's just so much that's been clearly broken with this team, and the vibe that I have gotten from them is that, like, the injuries, everything, we're kind of just ready for a fresh start next season. So it's hard for me to have any confidence when I just look at, look at where they're at, how every important game has gone. You lost to freaking Edmonton in the Labor Day replay when you were up by what? 12 or something in the fourth so i just i don't have i can't come in here and say i have faith i think that it's like this season they would what are you fighting for you're fighting to get in and get massacred by the bc lions yeah that's basically what it is now but it's to keep your streak alive your 17 years of making the playoffs when when you started the season i remember talking to you and saying and you were like oh big stamps news they're cutting Derek dennis and they're going to go with some younger guys. Some of those guys have passed him on the depth chart and they're just going to let him go. And I thought, okay, well, they better be sure. And mm-hmm. they weren't sure. Like They weren't sure. Yeah. And they maybe Derek wouldn't have been as good. But when you had Derek Dennis in there, you feel like you still have some proven, you know, smarts and integrity in the leadership role that maybe you, maybe that's part of what's missing on that line. You, maybe I mean, maybe I his overall production wasn't going to be that solid. But I don't the, think the interior has been as good as it was last year, but I no. I don't think like... But they were pretty... They I were think, arguably the best line in the league last arguably, year. arguably. They were the best line and, in the and, league last yeah. year. And, you, and like, I still think Sean McEwen's been playing exceptionally well. I, I, I think Zach Williams and, and Ryan Seavery, I don't have any real... like. I think they've been good. Like, And I'm not trying to like specifically target the left tackle spot but it was it was Derek Dennis last year and then Julian Good Jones who's now with the Philadelphia Eagles on the right like it was yeah. a, a real area of strength and I think that it's it allowed other areas that maybe needed time to grow that maybe needed to be better I, I think that it there 
Jake had that extra second he needed in the pocket. Right. So all of those things, I just, I think that the, the tackle spots have been, and look, they're young and I'm not saying that they're not going to get there, but I just, I think it's been a weakness for this team. And it's why like when I hear in the NFL, it's just accepted that the team with the best left tackle <laughs> it's gonna, is, is going to be amazing. Well, and that that's where you put your resources and money, right? You put it into left tackle and defensive end and a yeah. top receiver and a quarterback, like, because you want a level players at those positions. I think the biggest mistake, or maybe it was not a mistake, or it was just the thing that was not going to work out was when Derek announced his retirement before the season and said, this is going to be my last year. Mm -hmm. And whenever you go, Oh, it's like when you're leaving a job and you give two weeks notice and you're like, okay, I'm not putting in like all the effort that I would have because I've given my two weeks notice. He gave a year's notice and maybe they thought, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe he's not going to put in, you never the, give your landlord ex- more than the 30 days that you're required. Right? And I wouldn't give my you know, employer unless yeah. I really cared about them more than two weeks notice. It's more of like, because you're just not going to put in that effort the whole time that, and how many times do you see when it's like the last few days of your two weeks notice severance or your last few days, you don't do anything. Mm-hmm. So maybe they thought, okay, well, he's on his way out the door anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna start the rebuild in that position a year early. Turned out to be a mistake. Yeah. I mean, I think it was clearly a mistake. And look, like for anyone who's going to say, well, he was wide, he was in his mid thirties, he broke his leg last year. There was probably going to be going to be a drop off there. I mean, I can't, but he was still one of the best. He was probably the offensive lineman of the year last year when he was playing. Yeah, he would have been. Yes. I, so, I mean, he would have been, except that the voters, the voters, voters have don't weird, actually pay attention. And it's, have, it's a weird scenario. With yeah, that. yeah, we can. I mean, it's, I can't wait for the annual. I mean, it's, I'm doing enough hockey right now that I'm probably not going to be right in the thick, but the annual cfl awards voting just twitter is wars. it is it coming out soon like when have they announced I have they so. released I mean, the ballots yet i haven't because well, uh, i wanted to figure out i think rookie, the fan ballot has actually been open i know that last year now, i wanted so. to like or, no sorry a couple of weeks ago i wanted to figure out who was a rookie and who was not yeah and um i mean what i could have done is just Brandon lucas and asked him when it was coming out but i just looked last year and it was october i think 12th or 13th last year when they sent out the list of who rookies are right. for so we're supposed so to it's be, due any time now basically yeah we're, yeah we're gonna start thinking about this stuff in the coming days and i mean i'll just get a bunch of people i said this on britain with Britain who's but i'll just get a bunch of people mad at me because i <laughs> think that the best quarterback on the best team happens to be the MLB, but whatever yeah well and the thing is so the way the voting breaks down it always goes east versus west right it's not like a top three so we're it everyone's going to get a chance to decide between whoever comes out of the West and then against Chad Kelly, because it's clearly going to be Chad Kelly in the East division. Right. So can't be anyone else. Lovely. Yeah. No, he's, and I think he's the number one guy in the league. And I would, I would say when you make the statement, like he's obviously the MOP, he is yeah. he's like, like he, he goes out there and he's outstanding every game. He's, he hasn't, he hasn't had any bobbles of like, he just doesn't, he doesn't, stumble and fumble and he doesn't make mistakes i've seen a lot of mistakes from uh vernon adams jr and and zach Holleros this year there's they've been a they've made mistakes yeah. where he's just played mistake free and you can't blame him for his team being up by 20 every time and they're in the fourth quarter like does it like oh. The, oh they they haven't had much adversity I was like maybe they'll face that in the playoffs and like, but you can't you we, can't blame him for that he goes up there and does his job we, and he's been outstanding he's like the most outstanding player that's what the award is yeah and like i know that we we sort of repeat that same argument like or but like we repeat it because it's right <laughs> like, <laughs> and i mean and it's like even statistically like I, I do think that the passing yard is sort of the only area where you would yeah but like, i i i don't really care about i that don't really because, care about passing because yards. uh kevin glenn always used to lead the league in passing yards he'd be right up there and it was because a lot of times his team was coming from behind and they would be always throwing the ball like kevin glenn had a couple of 500 yard games where he didn't he didn't win the game yeah like, so well, passing he, yardage is not a stat that i look at and you know you, you look at wins for one and you know t- wins go on a quarterback stat like on the, any other position and i don't know if that's always fair mm-hmm. it's not always fair but wins for your team means you had the best quarterback generally. Well, like very rare, is, very rarely do you have a team that has the most wins and doesn't have the best quarterback. If I have to sit here and the morning after every game, read through like a bunch of emails from fans <laughs> who are yelling at me about Jake Mayer and then a bunch of people on Twitter telling me that they've 
had enough. This is all Jake Mayer's fault. If it's always the quarterback's fault when they lose, then, and it's, then always it's always the, the quarterback's fault when they win. Exactly. <laughs> so get out of here with this. Like, I can't, I like happen to point out that something else went wrong in a game and people tell me that I'm going too easy on the quarterback. No, guys. Like, by any objective measure, Chad Kelly has been the best quarterback in the CFL this season. There, yes. the, There's no argument there. He's been great on the ground. He's been great through the air. He doesn't make the mistakes that the higher-end guys have. He has literally not lost a game that he started and finished. Yes. What are we talking about here? Like, <laughs> is the point of this wins or losses, or isn't it? Like, if the only thing you care about is passing yards, well... Cool. Yeah, Vernon Adams Jr. leads in passing yards. I love now. Vernon Adams Jr. Exceptional season. Has and not had a better thing year is than he's, Chad Kelly. He's, he's ran up some yardage in. He ran up the yardage in this last game where he wasn't the most outstanding player. The, the most outstanding player well, was the running back on the other team. If Dominique Grimes had gotten for 15 yards instead of 65, Vernon would have had a lot yes less yards, but they would have won the game. So yes. Yeah. It exactly. Me, it drives me nuts. Well, that, what, a, what a game so that was. That was an amazing <laughs> game. And what I see from this game was a lot of halftime adjustments. Like BC had a great game plan coming so yeah, out let's of there. Tell, let's tell. Let me tell the story of the game quickly. Yeah. Okay. BC go was ahead. up. BC was up at halftime. Winnipeg sort of came storming back. BC had a shot to win. Star receiver Dominic Grimes went for the touchdown instead of going down before the clock expired, so they could just kick the field goal to win, and then Winnipeg wins in overtime. In overtime. Yeah. And I will say that it felt like. Like, you can't blame Dominic Rice. I don't think he thought there was any time left on the clock. Like he he's like catching a ball, running full speed, going, wait, should I fall down right oh, now? Also, to, I can I see like, my path to the end zone. I'm yeah, a receiver. Like yeah. that's how they And he just made a just a tiny stumble and the guy caught him and it was like But it, it, felt, it was it was it was you know frustrating to watch for Lions fans because it was like, okay, they've had hardly anything going in the second half. They have the big play to win the game and it just falls short and then it was, it was over. It was riveting, but it also for me, like we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We're like, I said we both said the winner of this game, like the Lions don't want to go into Winnipeg in November. You just don't want to play the West Final in a cold weather city outdoors where the bombers have been practicing in minus 30 for two friggin' weeks and you've been like picking flowers and and feeding hummingbirds or whatever they do in vancouver <laughs> <laughs> was it hummingbirds or go oh, seagulls i thought it was seagulls. I, I don't know I was just, <laughs> you don't like, feed the seagulls they'll, they'll never leave you it's alone. a warm weather bird i don't know <laughs> but like so i this was in my opinion this was a season the final that's not to say that the lions can't win but this was a huge win for the bombers and you could sort of feel the season go down but you were saying what you saw from the game well and what i see from the game was okay so they go into halftime and Winnipeg has a very veteran coaching staff with a veteran team and they knew exactly what was going to work in the second half. They came out and did that. They they managed to make that pressure on Vernon Adams Jr. like make it count because he was moving away from the pressure in the first half. And then in the second half, he couldn't move away from that pressure because they came brought it from different spots. Really nice game plan. Richie Hall did a good job of like, okay, we gotta, we're going to bring the pressure to him that he can't escape from. And the Bombers' good? defensive ends, even when they're not on top of you, they do a better job than anyone in the league Just of getting, getting in those lanes. Up. and get their hands up, and you and don't have your passing lane. There's no passing lane, and they figured out, okay, we're going to send them down the passing lanes and bring the pressure from different areas, and it was great. Then in the offense said, wait, we're going to just one, run one play over and over and over until they stop it, and they never stopped it. It was just a screen pass or a handoff in the same sweep to Brady Oliveira, they got him out in space every time and in like eight, nine yards, eight, nine yards, eight, nine yards. And they were just basically He's so good. Yeah. And it's like, okay, Dara, we're daring you to stop this. Mm -hmm. And how do you know, not know what's coming? Well, they didn't, they couldn't stop it. And Brady Oliveira just like ran down the field and then it was overtime. It was like, well, we're just going to dump it off and send it down there. And it was like, yeah, you guys aren't doing anything to stop this play. Come November 12th, November. Yeah. November 12th. We're going to know all this. All this stuff's been on tape now. Mm -hmm. Now now it's the chess match. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, well, I, I feel confident that the BC Lions coordinators, Jason Shivers on defense, and I'm, I'm getting that right, right? And uh, Jordan Maximic on offense. I don't, <laughs> I don't know their coaching staff as well. As I should, so well, I'm not gonna uh, and that. Jordan Maximic on offense, they're going to, they've been, they're basically sitting there studying it already. They're trying to figure out, okay, what, what went wrong in this game? Why they adjust? Why they? Why did they end up beating us? They're going to come up with that game plan, and then it's just going to be 
them against Buck Pierce and R Richie Hull. And it's going to be a nice little chess match to keep watching. And it's like, okay, the Lions are going to go into that going, we have one thing to stop. We're going to stop Brady Oliveira and make Zach Colorado beat us. And we figure that he's going to give us a couple of mistakes and we're going to have to take advantage of those. That's the way I, I break that one down. Now, I'm, I'm fully expecting Winnipeg beats Edmonton next week, clinches first place. It's all over. But then we're going to be focused on, okay, well, BC is going to gear up for Saskatchewan or Calgary. They're going to wipe them out. And then we're going to have this big game on November 12th. If the Stampeders... No, it's on November 11th. If the it's on Saturday. Win. It's on Saturday this year. So, If the Stampeders win this weekend against the Riders and then the Bombers rest all their starters for the final game of the year, and that's how the Stampeders get into the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and... Just Riders fans are just losing their minds about it. Like, I just can't deal with it. We're canceling the podcast. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing it. Because <laughs> I understand why they'd be angry. You mean, not gonna tell you mean you. canceling yeah. it completely or just taking one week off to let everybody cool off? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. <laughs> um, well, don't cancel it completely. It's starting to gain some momentum now. Yeah. I mean, I thank you. Um, I just like, can't deal with the, that discourse. I just, yeah. that discourse is too much for me. I work so hard, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it is shaping up. Like, it's not, I wouldn't say that this is shaping up to be sort of like an all time classic October for the no. league. No. And weirdly, looking at the schedule, there's three teams, wait, yeah, three teams on buys in each of the last two weeks of the season. So, what? There's only three games on each of those weeks. So it means three teams are off on buys in each of the last two weeks of the season. So why are they doing that? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't, Danny. I don't know. <laughs> well, the schedule has made very little sense this year in the sense that, okay, well, you don't play each team home and away for some reason. There's only nine teams in the league. You can easily do that. It just, there's been quirks in this schedule where it's just not made any sense. So they have three teams on a bye in each of the, so there's just fewer games. And that means most of the playoff races are decided. We're going to have like it all decided in the last couple of weeks where it's, these games aren't going to change anything in the standings. I mean, you're hearing me react to this news that is very like CFL schedule quirks that I'm not sure like anyone <laughs> other than a small percentage of our population cares about, but that's, this is insane. What this is like? Because well, this is literally where people start paying attention. Why are you only doing three games on what should be the two biggest weekends of the regular season outside of Labor Day? Really, like this is where yeah, stuff. Well, pretty much everything could be decided this weekend. Not really, but yes. There must be something going on like, here. I I don't know what that's about. So yes, yeah, so you have after this weekend, you literally have Calgary at BC, Toronto at Sask. Edmonton to Winnipeg. We only have six games left for the entire regular season. Though. Yeah. Was, yeah. And over the course of two weeks. So, so none of those games are all that interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, I mean, Toronto at Sask, just because Sask may be, I mean, if, if the Riders lose, like they just need to win that, which Toronto will yeah. see what, but like there's no, there is no metric, objectively speaking, by which any of us should be saying that that's an interesting game because the, the Argos are so much better. Well, let, let's say Saskatchewan wins this week. That that clinches their third place. Yeah, then they're, yeah. Then they're just going to be tuning up for the playoffs. That's their final home game, which they is always... They week in the last week. They need to keep guys fresh. Yeah, they're, they, they're, they're going to be needing to tune up, and then they're going to want to win two in a row going into the playoffs. I will say... And then if Hamilton loses this weekend to... Uh, BC. Right. And Montreal wins, then that East semifinal is clinched so and we know who the combatants are yeah so that makes the last couple of weeks of that season okay i mean i do love I, I hope that this game is relevant but like i do like hamilton montreal uh final weekend of the year like that's that has potential to be a really fun game if there's something up for grabs if there's home right if there's home field up so for grabs. The, the problem, if not they're just going to close down their playbooks and not show each other absolutely anything yeah well and that's that's the problem because montreal already has the season series against hamilton so all they have to do is remain one game ahead of them heading into that week and they will have it all, all oh, wrapped up. Jeez. And they have Edmonton this weekend. So they're going to remain. All right. Well, <laughs> that game's not as much fun as I thought. Ah, oh, man. This is <laughs> I didn't mean to take the wind of the sails here, but. Well, uh, no, but this is, I mean, this is. But this is why I'm like, okay, let's. It's a little bit of a, a bummer month, to be honest. Like, given that oftentimes we're heading into mid-October and it's like, 
particularly as a the guy covering the stamps normally it's like they're battling it out for the top of the west there's games that are you know right. there have been years as recently as i believe 2021 no it would have been 2019 where like literally coming into the last weekend of the year the riders bombers or stamps could have had the west final yeah that one that one was a fun year because yeah. it came right down to the wire and then um and now there's just not Ca- really calgary any got of the that. home game and it turned out to be the coldest day in the history of mankind yeah that so was, that day was awful <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. that day was terrible i do i mean <laughs> just weather talk with danny and Ian. <laughs> today's the first day where it's like ah, oh, it's rainy like it feels like our yeah. extended summer into fall is over so yeah but um, it's still fairly mild out there that's, that's nice bad. it's yeah. nice um i just like as i walked into this auto dome this morning and it was just pouring rain and i was just like the most miserable i've ever been in my life um, <laughs> and, um are you are you is, is it because hockey season's now and you got overlapping no I you have just, overlapping teams that you're trying to pay attention to i was to, cold so. and wet and yeah. i have stuff going like not bad stuff but i have stuff going on so i'm quite busy at the moment and i was just like tired and like i'm walking in for morning skate the night before and like this is way too inside baseball but the thing is like this morning's practice whether this is for football or hockey or any sport is the most irrelevant thing for me to write off of because we've just Mm. finished training camp we're finally actually going to learn stuff tonight so anything i write this morning which we need to do for our deadlines is completely irrelevant for for in in a couple hours and no one's paying attention to people they just want the game so i was walking in sort of miserable and then uh this is just story time nothing to do with football um (laughs) and then (laughs) so i went out to my aunt's buffalo ranch um mm-hmm. for thanksgiving on on sunday and like like clockwork this is something that happens every time i go out there for like three weeks i just like drop agricultural facts as if i know what i'm talking about and i just like it's like three people this morning at the saddle dome like security all that i just like talked about how well it's good for the drought you know hasn't been the grass hasn't been growing that much of this year out on the ranches um and so and i just pretend like i know what i'm talking about but like i feel really tough um <laughs> so, yes. now, now you're yeah. farmer coming in from the fields from the end of the the farming season and now it's hockey season right exactly yeah, yeah. there you go yeah okay. give me my truck in my well i still think it's football season because that's what i, I care most pints, about but i chug pints of oil right out of the ground um yeah did did you realize that the playoff games are on saturday this year because i yes. mentioned that quickly and i, I did didn't realize that. that i always think it's going to be sunday and it's not it's I, on I mean, saturday i like it sunday because it's tradition but i don't know that it makes a huge difference to me that it's saturdays and yeah. like they're trying to avoid the nfl and it's know, fine like yeah. what am i gonna say and it gives them the extra day after the west final east final to get the teams ready to go to the great cup to go to hamilton so, yeah. um did you see the news that edmonton is closing the upper bowl at commonwealth next season neck for net all of next season is yeah. that that's what they're, they're plan not selling is? tickets for the upper bowl at commonwealth stadium for huh. games doesn't bother me in the least no uh i think it's big enough on the the bottom level that it, they're still going to make if they fill the bottom level you get a bet, better atmosphere and you like make the crowd look bigger even if it's the same yeah. but uh yeah i know a lot of people though that they, they love their first row second row third row upper bowl seats so they're not going to be happy yeah. but i mean I, and that like that people have every right to yeah. that to that particular like oh i love my seats i've been going here no no argument yeah. for me i get that I now the, it's gonna be the entire upper bowl or just yeah, that's uh, what three down was like, saying okay um that's yeah. what three down was saying my whole thing is that like look if you have been at that stadium over the last couple of years you know it's been pretty barren yeah um and it's similar it's to what the stamps stadium, did this year like, it is a big stadium um it, like ultimately this is this is for the best and we have to acknowledge where this league as it at it is at in alberta right now yeah. which is just that it's not selling out these massive stadiums that are pretty old and the commonwealth's great it's not nearly as bad as mcmahon but it's still old yeah like it's still an old school stadium mm-hmm. and the thing is there's no telling that okay if they host a playoff game they can't they, they can say hey <laughs> we've we've opened up the first 10 rows of the upper deck for the playoffs like you, you can you can do that it's not gonna they're not permanently closing it no like, it's, it's not like, like they're just tarping it for a while so yeah, yeah. and it, that, it's disappointing to like the way that it's gone in edmonton but they are the team feels like it's on an upswing now it's un- unfortunately that they took too long to figure it out they spent the first half of the year you saw tripping, that tripping, tripping over touchdown the, on friday oh my god he's he's, unbelievable. he's still he's still the best highlight reel in the league right now 100%. so i 
I would say, let's not worry too much about this. Maybe it's a down year and they're trying to create a bit of an atmosphere in their lower bowl. And, you know, when you go and sit and there's nobody in your row and there's nobody around you, no. it doesn't, you don't have the same type of atmosphere sitting in the stands as someone who's only sat in the stands for the last few years. I'm like, if I go to a movie, I want the theater pretty much empty. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, you should buy out the whole theater. Then <laughs> I've, I've become, I've become quite a grump when it comes to movies. I need my aisle seats and I like it empty. I don't. I, this is why living across from Eau Claire Cinema is the best. Oh, yeah, because nobody, nobody goes, goes there. there. And they're going to tear it down, although I won't be living there anymore. But, like, still. Um, but sports, I want there to be the biggest crowd possible. Right. And, look, I think they're going to rebuild. Like, I, I have full faith that Edmonton with – there's a calm there with Victor not there that I think we're already sort of feeling. I think Victor, the energy – or, sorry uh, – Trey Ford, the energy he's brought is real. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm just increasingly convinced, like, why wouldn't an NFL team take a shot on him? Like, a guy with that sort of athleticism, they don't come along. He may not end up being your starting quarterback, but, like, with the way the NFL is going, and they are so much more sort of, like, innovative with the way that they use guys on the ground. Um, well, and Trey Ford's probably NFL, has, NFL hasn't, like, taken the whole short yardage quarterback thing that this – the CFL has done over the last 10 to 15 years where every team seems to have a short yardage guy, you know, and well, that's because the Eagles can just throw in Jalen hurts and he can get four I, yards on the ground. Yeah. And then like the tush push and, yeah, just, and that's going to work until one of these franchise quarterbacks gets hurt and then they're going to reconsider it. Why? Like, so I genuinely, there must be a reason why, and it could be the yard off the ball. I don't know, but like, I honestly just expected that to be like, cool. The Stampeders only need eight yards now. Right. On first and second down, and then those give it to Tommy Stevens and do a touch push, and you got your yards. Yeah. And it just hasn't happened. I don't, and I don't know why. And I, that's actually an interesting question that I'd love to ask a coach, like why it hasn't crossed over here. Well, you you do have to have a, like so f the Philadelphia Eagles are the ones that do it the best, yes. and it's because they've got a jumbo offensive line, so they can throw their tight ends and fullbacks in behind and just follow those guys all way. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has the the um, offensive line to just get that push off the first yard and then they just push the quarterback all the way through and it's two mm -hmm. two yards or whatever. Not everybody has the personnel to do it. So maybe that's the case. And maybe you don't have like the, the, there's limited limitations in the rosters. There's not enough players on the roster to just dress two giant fullbacks to push your mm -hmm. quarterback. And, but we'll see it's football is a copycat sport. So if something works for somebody, somebody else is going to try it. And I, I think a couple of teams in the NFL have tried it. We haven't seen it in the CFL yet. But we also haven't seen the NFL go, hey, let's bring in a Trey Ford and he can be our short yardage guy and we can swing him out on bootlegs and he might get 30 yards, Yeah. right? So th that's the type of thing that I, okay, well, give it a shot. Maybe it'll work. I just it know. Would be it would be tough for the league to lose Trey Ford. But also, again, with Nathan Rourke well, going down, like two quarterback, Canadian quarterbacks in a row to go, that would be good for the league too. I, so I tweeted it's, this this week at how like it's nuts that we basically waited 30 years for a Canadian quarterback. <laughs> yeah. And now we've got two and two years, but like, it just sucks that like, it doesn't suck. It's amazing. And it's great. And none of this is an actual complaint, but like we got two of them and they were so good that they're not sticking around. Like just yeah. give me a mediocre Canadian quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> give me a, a, a that was Brandon bridges uh, yeah. or <laughs> no, but I'm talking like and I, I, mediocre is the wrong word. Cause these guys no, are no. so talented, but like, 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 like good, good pack, enough to start, but not, like that he's going to get plucked to the NFL. Give like, me Canadian yeah. Trevor Harris. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, maybe well, I not think, your I MOP, but like a very good quarterback in the league who isn't just going to go to the NFL. That's all I'm asking for. Well, and I think eventually we are going to get to that level. Like, because, you know, you, you know, Nathan Burke's little brother is coming up. Maybe he's the guy that's going to he's come in and start. Up. He's not, he's going to go straight to the NFL he's too. Going straight to the NFL. Well, then, then, then we'll have three in three years or whatever. So I mean, the impression <laughs> that I have is that he is like viewed as a, like pretty, pretty like a one okay. type prospect. Um, now, and part of that may just be because like Nathan opened eyes, so no, there's eyes on him. But like, yeah, right. I think that he's what he's. I, I do not expect to see a little rookie up here anytime soon. I don't okay, know why I call him little rookie. <laughs> little rookie. God, um, <laughs> isn't he bigger than Nathan? <laughs> um, okay, anyway. let's just do rapid fire and then get out of here. Okay, Lions, Ticats. Who you taking? Uh, that one is in BC. That one is in Hamilton. In Hamilton. You know what? And BC lost to Hamilton at home a few weeks ago when it felt like it was because they couldn't stop the run game. 
BC's had the weirdest season. Yeah. Like and, there have been and, moments where I've actually been like, oh no, they're just bad after like a couple games. And then well, they come back and I'm like, no, they're not bad. They're pretty good. Like, how do you how do you repair a run de- run defense or a short yardage running back defense? in a short amount of time. So that's what the Lions have to figure out. When I mentioned earlier, well, how they lost to the Bombers, they're going to need to figure that out. Oh man, that was a tough one. That's a coin flip, honestly. I'm taking the Tigers. I think the Tigers are really good right now. Um, and the, and I expect we'll see more of Bo. Um, and that is a good thing. It was nice to see him back in action. And uh, like someone, and again, for some reason, the Tigers, like, they use a different, web platform than the rest of the cfl for their website they always have and i can't pull up their schedule right now but like someone was saying to me that in like the last three months or something like they basically only lost to the argos yes. like it, it seems like that way yeah i mean i so, i don't have they won two in a row i don't know if they played the argos three games ago um they did yeah okay. they had a bye week in there as well as i think too yeah but either way like <clears throat> that's a good football team i i think that they're heading in the right direction um and I think sure BC, there's a little bit I, of I think a BC knows from... that they don't have to lay it all out on the line. They're going to host the West semi yeah. they, and they like, they, it, it's out of their control because all Winnipeg has to do next weekend is beat the Elks and then they're, they win first place. So yeah, yeah. exactly. So there's, and there's just probably inevitably a come down from a game like last week where you fought, you lost, um, you know, you come back into work, you work hard, but you're probably just a little bit down. So I'm taking the tie cats there. And I am legitimately, I will say that like, in a very short cameo, I did think Bo looked pretty decent out there. So yeah. um, that was good to see. Threw for big yardage in uh, just yeah. a few throws. So uh, we're going to finish with Riders stamps, but I will go, I mean, Montreal, Edmonton. This is obviously Montreal. And that's in Edmonton though, right? Yeah. So that all depends to me on Montreal, the Friday night, because Hamilton, if Hamilton loses, then Saturday, Montreal is like, well, it, they don't need to. They were, I think that, I believe they will clinch. I believe they'll clinch uh, second place if Hamilton loses. I think so. So, yeah. So if Hamilton puts the gears to them, they'll go out. But one thing about Montreal, though, sneakily, well, it's obviously the two biggest pickups mid-season were Sean Lehman and Darnell Sankey. Mm -hmm. They that's how you rebuild a defense right in the middle of the year. (laughs) (laughs) So you bring in those two guys, and they have like, and both of those guys are like, like energy guys around the team and they're just they're likable and they're really they brought so much energy to that alouette's defense they're not allowing anything right now lemon and and lemon in that front four is getting after the quarterback and sankey's cleaning up everything else it's just like okay this team they might grind out some stuff and i they're they're a team to watch out for in the playoffs sean lemon is gonna get to 10 sacks again despite (laughs) not having a job like it's just it's inevitable so a couple weeks ago i complained to you that in the CFL guide, they have only the top seven quarterback sack leaders of all time. Then finally, when Lemon gets to a hundred this weekend, it was just like, okay, so the final, the list has come out and he's 13th. I'm like, thank God we have finally got the stats to prove that he's been yeah. like, okay, he's 13th all time. And he gets one more, he ties Odell Willis. So that was a storied career. So geez, okay. Like he's, he's gonna, get after but trey ford's not going to let him it's just it's not going to be easy getting to trey ford so that that no. game has a little bit of that it, it has watchability that, i would it say has so. watchability it doesn't have like a, it depends how friday night goes obviously but like yeah. yeah i mean montreal like montreal's just goofy to me man like i think that they're good in a in a playoff game i think i'd pick hamilton between the two of them for right now but right that's, um but that's gonna be a grinded out uh like both of those come defenses are so good and, and that's I, the thing it's gonna be a grinded out game yeah. and it's gonna be very physical I yeah I, I i do actually want to like i'm i'm not I, i'm gonna have to think about montreal hamilton like we don't have to make our picks right now but no, like that, no i actually don't know how, how confident i am in saying that uh ottawa toronto i i'm gonna let you speak because i don't want to waste anyone's time making them <laughs> well d- about this. is toronto gonna play anybody the the Interesting thing about Toronto over the last three weeks here is how much do they play their guys yeah. and how much, you know, they're going to focus on because they haven't played their guys in the last couple of weeks. I feel like with Ottawa, Ottawa's that was embarrassing last week. Yeah. Ottawa's Ottawa is done. They scored a total of three points. Oh, they didn't they're have much like fight, dinner. but then it was just Montreal going, Aaron, no, we're not going to allow you to score. No, we're going to win this game. Did Fine. you see my hilarious joke on Twitter? I don't, I don't know. You have so many. Which one are you referring to? Uh, like this Ottawa 
I don't know, CTV or something. I should probably know his reporter was like, would have been impossible to believe as the Red Blacks walked off the field following the 2018 Grey Cup that this is how the last five years would have gone. And I was like, more of a slide than a walk, really. Yeah. It was so icy. <laughs> <laughs> Love that there joke. Love go. that joke. Oh, wow. Gotta, that gotta make it a real deep there. Yeah. Joke. I still I still feel like Toronto's backups will roll out of bed and, and whip to Ottawa this weekend. And you know, I think you still have to play Kelly in and, and the starters and you just have to like keep them sharp, yeah. you know, and I think they I think they finish up with Ottawa at home. Like they've got two games against Ottawa and that's the rest of the season. That they could get to sixteen wins, right? Wait, they so. must have three yeah. games. They must have three games left. They don't have a bye week left. They got somebody else in there. And the stats are all confusing because it hasn't always been. Right. They got to go into Saskatchewan. But like they so, can get to 16 wins. And yeah. That's it's the stat is very, like it's a weird stat that I don't have in front of me, but it's like, it's actually not most wins. It's least losses is the record. Like, I don't know. There's something weird about it. Well, because, well, in previous year, like, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, the least losses in a season is the 48 Stampeders. They had zero. So, yeah, but it wasn't an 18 game. No, of course. So like it was 12, 12 and 0 regular season, two and 0 in the playoffs. But so it's like, uh, I don't know, the 16 and 2 89 Eskimos, the Stampeders of a few years ago were 15, 1, 15, 2 and 1. Yeah. And they had a chance going into the last week of the season to be 16, 1 and 1, which they were called the greatest record of all, like the greatest win percentage in the modern era. Yeah. So. Where where you put this team all time, I don't know. It's up for debate. But you always it, you gotta get and you, you always gotta you always gotta finish it up. You gotta right? win the Grey Cup. Then we talked yeah. about it, but like they're they're on that list. People don't people don't want to acknowledge it for some reason. But like Well, and because they made it look easy. And apparently when you make it look easy, people don't believe you're it's true. No. So finally, we're not gonna do any more breaking it down of it than we have, but <laughs> Ryder Stamps, who are you taking? And you say Reggie Bagleton is out in this game? Uh, he was listed on today's injury report as doubtful, I believe was the exact word. Okay. Yes, <laughs> doubtful. I love the Stampeders injury reports because they have like, they don't make stuff up or anything. Like no. everything is always accurate, but just like, like Reggie is doubtful, but Tommy Lee Lewis is questionable. And like, I just don't know if like, there's an actual, like, like if there are a gauge on a rating where you have to, yeah, yeah. like it's not, it's not a exact science or anything. I mean, they'll probably take it right up until game time before they figure out if Reggie's going to play or not. If Reggie and Tommy Lee Lewis are out. <sighs> yeah, I don't. It doesn't feel like, and the weather is just going to be mediocre here. I think in a bad weather game, you would probably like the stamps a bit more. Ah, yeah. I what is I weather? still, I, that's a toss up. That's all, that's all you can say. But the thing is, that's not gonna neither nice of these all. teams has given you any sort of sign that they are capable of winning a game right now. I mean, someone has to win. Yes. Um, Unless it's a tie, like I said. But those are, I, those I, are long odds to bet on the, uh, the old app there. Maybe I'll look them up. I am ultimately taking... Put $2 down on that. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm taking the riders here. Um, I think the stamps will pull it out then. Okay. It's their... I just think that like the stamps have had so many opportunities to show me that fight when they've... Like their backs have been against the wall. Maybe not full do or die. Maybe not must win in the like pure right. sense of it. But like games where like they just haven't done it. Like they've just lost that fight. Yeah. And like sure they get back up. Well, and they they, they coming off a bye week and they've generally in they're their terrible history, coming off bye weeks. Their recently. history of like previously <laughs> to this year has been much better coming off bye weeks. So yeah, but maybe they all have gone and they're like, oh, I can't wait for off season we got three more weeks left yeah yeah i don't know you would you would hope they're going to come out with some punch in the mouth because like show some fight like what's the thing man the fans deserve that you're at home honestly this has just been it's it's such a strange season that i'm not gonna unpack until it's fully over but like i'm i'm even curious in terms of like you know how this affects certain guys like i mean i for the record, I think Mark Killam would be a great head coach. Terrific. I think he already should have been hired. But, like, given the way that the season has gone, it's likely, like, like his. it's not a knock on him. It's, I'm not saying that, right. but he's likely a slightly less attractive candidate right now compared to a year ago. You know, it, this really affects people, like, in a real human way. Um, and, again, 
hire Mark Gillum. I think Mark Gillum would be a great head coach. I'm not I, I know. Otherwise. I think we've been saying that yes. for years. But like, you know what I mean? So there's just so much that I'm, I'm had it has it hit on. But they, man, the Stampeders team, they they had so many chances to show me, and they just haven't. So yeah. I'm picking the Riders, who ultimately. All right, I'll take the stamps, and we'll see at the end of the weekend how we're doing. <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, Ian, anything you want to plug? Anything you want to throw to? Uh, no, not. I don't know. It's especially. I've been uh, doing sports on uh, the weekend, so I'll be doing the updates for you guys mostly during the afternoons. But uh, that's good fun. I get to talk about sports in the afternoons again. I love that. I'm buddy. excited about it. You're great at it, and you're you're my favorite guest. So thank you for coming in, um, guys. I'm not going to do an outro. I'm just going to throw to the end of this. But uh, thanks to Mugs Pub. We love them. Check out their. They got tons of specials. They got everything. Mugs Pub Wednesday night. I'll see you guys at trivia pretty soon. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop by. Not tonight because I have the Flames game. Thank you to Fraserwood. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to Ian Busby. Thank you to Brendan Gray. Peace.